Question 52 is What is life like for us when we first die and return to the spirit world? It all depends upon how we have lived our earth lives and our spiritual progress and understanding, as I briefly outlined in Answer 39, where I also mention a very informative book called Life in the World Unseen by Anthony Borgia. In this book it details the findings and experiences of Monsignor Robert Hugh Benson, a son of Edward White Benson, former Archbishop of Canterbury, when he first died and returned to spirit life. By the way, he communicated via the medium, Anthony Borgia, with the desire to help correct the errors that he had taught during his earth life church ministry. At the same time, he went much further than pointing out the incorrect teachings of religion, by sharing with us, a vivid and picturesque picture of life in the spiritual spheres, as the book's introduction described it. Below is just a tiny, paraphrased, example from the early first experiences of Robert Benson when he was first taken to a place that he could call home, it was literally a duplicate of his earth home that had been created in the spirit world. When I was first introduced to my spirit home, I observed that it was the same as my earth home, but with a difference. As I entered the doorway I saw at once the several changes that had been brought about. These changes were mostly of a structural nature and were exactly of the description of those that I had always wished I could have carried out to my earthly house, but which for architectural and other reasons I had never been able to have done. Here, earthly needs had no place, so that I found my spirit home, in general disposition, exactly as I had ever wished it to be. The essential requisites indispensably associated with an earthly homestead were, of course, completely superfluous here, for example, the severely mundane matter of providing the body with food. That is one instance of the difference. And so with others it is easy enough to call to mind. While standing within its walls I was fully aware of its permanence as compared with what I had left behind me. But it was a permanence that I knew I could end, permanent only so long as I wished it to be so. It was more than a mere house, it was a spiritual haven, an abode of peace, where the usual domestic cares and responsibilities were wholly absent. The furniture that it contained consisted largely of that which I had provided for its earthly original, not because it was particularly beautiful, but because I had found it useful and comfortable, and adequately suited my few requirements. Most of the small articles of adornment were to be seen displayed in their customary places, and altogether the whole house presented the unmistakable appearance of occupancy. I had truly come home. In the room that had formerly been my study I noticed some well-filled bookshelves. At first I was rather surprised to see such things, but upon further thought I could see no reason, if such as this house could exist why books should not also have their place within the scheme. To conclude this answer, and to somewhat repeat what is already said in this book, what do we wish to find when we first go home? We, effectively, make our own home by how we live. Undoubtedly, other than the fact that Robert Benson taught incorrect doctrines of his religion, he must have been a good man and this is reflected by the spirit level upon which he found himself, and the abode he deserved by his efforts, when he went home to spirit life. Some people, as the next answer mentions, find themselves in far different circumstances.